guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren, thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Today I'm really excited because I'm doing a bit of like a tutorial type thing. I don't always do tutorials on the channel, but I really thought it would be fun to show you guys a bit of an everyday makeup routine. There's a few different things. Hello, I'm wearing a wing today, whoa, who am I? But I thought it would be fun to show you guys how I've kind of modernized some of the trends or just the way I do certain makeup techniques or use certain makeup products and how I've taken them from like 2016 and modernized them to what I feel like is super trendy today. Because let's be real, how we used to contour in 2016, I don't think it flies as much. I really don't think that's kind of the fresh face look that we're really experiencing now. So I thought it would be fun to show you what I'm doing differently when it comes to the eyeliner. I show you the way that I think that eyeliner can be kind of modernized from the wings of like 2016, <laughs> the wings I wore on my wedding day and I'm really excited because today's video is actually sponsored by Ofra. I have been working with Ofra actually quite a bit on their channel in the last year and also on their Instagram but today I'm bringing you a video actually on my channel so I'm going to be using all Ofra products. If you see anything that you're interested in you can of course shop the links. I will have everything listed down there and really I hope that you guys can take away maybe some information, try something new. I think it's so fun to explore and try different techniques and placement and whatnot so I hope you guys will enjoy the video. Without further ado, let's get into the face. Topic. Each of these like categories are really what we're kind of modernizing. And the first thing I want to talk about is like bronzer and contour because I feel like when I started with the beauty community, contouring was it. The ABH contour palette, you guys remember, that was like so the thing. And I would say that I don't think contouring's dead, but I do think there are ways to modernize it. So for me, when I'm thinking of bronzing, when I'm thinking of contouring, what I'm really doing is adding dimension to the face. That's how I think of it, right? <laughs> Once you've applied all your foundation, you've applied your concealer, you're kind of sitting there with this blank face, this blank slate, very one noted, and you need to bring some of that dimension back to your face. And that's what contour slash bronzer which I personally do both of those at the same time that's what I'm trying to do with bronzer so I'm not really trying to chisel I'm really just trying to not make my face one flat color and bring that dimension back and I probably should tell you what I'm using hello this is the skin sculpting wand in sunset this is a cream product and I'm just applying it straight from the tube I don't always do that with products sometimes I like a little bit more control and I'll put stuff on like the back of my hand which I'll show you in a a little bit but really I'm just hitting the normal places so I like to hit the temple because <laughs> I feel like my hairline is receding so I like to definitely kind of bronze that up I do hit kind of the contour of the cheek I tend to go a little bit higher though and I feel like as you blend it kind of blends down and it just makes sure that your contour or like bronzer doesn't end up like too far down your cheek which doesn't like lift the face which is what we want you don't have to like sit there and like chisel though I don't think that's as popular now. I am gonna hit my chin and deepen that up a little bit. I think natural in general is so much more popular today than it was, even back in 2016. So if you're still doing some of those techniques and you don't like it, obviously you do you, do whatever you like. But if you're wanting to do something a little bit more modern, I do suggest maybe trying to go a little bit lighter and, and not really chisel those cheekbones out. All right, I think I'm gonna leave it there for now. We can always go in with more, that's another thing too. As I kind of add products, I can tweak week as I go. Next I want to talk about blush and we're going to be using a cream blush. This one is truly from Ofra. They just came out with some cream blushes and I really do like them. This color is really really beautiful and like I said I put this on the back of my hand instead of dotting it on because I personally just want a little bit more control and so I'm going to take my sponge and I just dip the round part into the product and then I'm gonna show you how I blush drape. I have videos on this, but I do feel like I get asked quite often like what I do to blush drape. So I usually start with a cream base and what I like to do is apply it kind of from the back corner of the eye onto the cheekbone and kind of into the temple and even up to like the tail of the brow. That's where I start placing blush. Now this is almost like an older kind of technique, like blush draping is not a new thing, but I have been doing this probably, I mean, probably for like almost a year now, but I just love the way that this looks. I think that it's fresh and like interesting without being over the top. And you can kind of play that up or play that down depending on what color you're using and how intense you're going with application. And so I just, I mean, I love a cream blush right now. That's so on trend. I think everyone knows that, um, but I think maybe changing up your 
your placement if you're still just applying blush like on the apples of your cheek and again you don't love that I think you should try this out another reason I really like this technique with blush draping is I think it really lifts my face and I do like that <laughs> I do like that kind of look and I also like having my eyeshadows kind of blend into my blush like something about that is just editorial but every day and I think that that is something that's kind of modern as well because even though we're going more natural I feel like by using placement you're making it more edgy and so this is my normal like placement of blush which I'm sure you guys have seen and I freaking love 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 it and when you use a cream blush something I love as well is I can leave it like this which I might because I'm kind of going for like a more natural look but if I wanted to I could even intensify it a little bit by adding some powder I really really have been enjoying this liquid blush I think it's really nice even this alone add some mascara I think it's so fresh faced so beautiful I just love it and if you've been wondering how I do my blush this is how I do it you can change it up with like colors you can try creams try powders but maybe just try some type of draping and maybe lifting your blush back and up instead of bringing it further down. I definitely think this is to me more modern, but I also could just be like on my own trip around the sun. <laughs> All right, next, the last thing that I'm doing for the face is let's talk about some highlighter, okay? I'm obsessed with highlighter. I just am, and it's so funny because I used to not be. And I feel like a couple of years ago, like the really stark, like three shades too light highlighters were really popular. And so for me, what I've been noticing that I've been gravitating to, and I think is a lot more modern, are picking highlighters that are actually closer to your skin tone. And so even if they are really shiny when they hit the light that's the only time you're really going to see that shine otherwise it's going to look pretty normal and if you've ever used a highlighter that's a little bit too light for your skin sometimes you can see that stripe and it's not as natural looking so over has amazing highlighters i think everyone knows that like their highlighters are so well known rodeo drive is a classic there's blissful there's star island but lately i've been using this new one and it's like come to the top of my list pretty fast this is the milk and cookies highlighter and it is a collab with steph toms okay i'm just a sucker for a split pan i really <laughs> i really love a split pan i think i feel like i'm getting a lot of value and i also feel like <laughs> i could be my own little artist and i can uh you know swirl things or not swirl things it's like my choice so this type of highlighter to me I feel like back in the day I would have thought this was too dark for me and I love that like if I'm questioning is it is it not it's probably perfect <laughs> that's what I've been liking lately honestly so how I do my highlighter I first get my fan brush ready this is another pro tip a way that you can use these highlighters that might be on the verge or just a little bit deeper than you're used to is you can still use a light hand and I feel like fan brushes are a really great way that you can apply product slowly build up as you go and you're not gonna get this like stripe or this really heavy application I feel like that's really dated so we're trying to keep it light we're trying to keep it lifted and the fan brush is gonna help you do that then I take a spray so I always like to spray my face before I go in with a powder highlight I feel like it really helps melt it into my skin it doesn't give it like a powdery finish just helps it all sink together I just love the look it's beautiful it's like what I do so so I'm gonna spray this down and then I just take my fan brush and I apply it to the tops of the cheekbone like this, like really light, light pressure, just sweeping it on, just letting that highlight hit where we put that spray down. And I go kind of crazy, like I highlight everywhere and it's so beautiful. And I think if you're feeling like you're just seeing the highlighter on your face, this technique, I try this out i'm telling you take a spray this one is the makeup fixer which i don't know how long you've been here but if you've been here a while <laughs> i did this makeup math series for a little bit and one of the things that i kind of calculated were makeup setting mist and kind of the best value and the over one's one of the freaking best values there are eight fluid ounces in this thing and a lot of them only have like four or so so if you want some bang for your buck this is a good one also if you've been here that long and you remember that video comment down below. Thank you for being here still, man. That was a while ago. Anyway, I really suggest like all three of these things to help make your powder highlighters just look really natural. If you're having trouble achieving it and you're not doing any of these things or only doing one, try adding them all together. Fan brush with light application, a spritz before, and a highlighter that isn't too stark for your skin tone. Try to get something that matches your undertone. So if you're cool tone, get something that's cool. If you're warm tone, get something warm. If you're neutral, you can kind of mix it up. Don't want to be too, too light. And I think you'll really love the outcome. And it'll be super modern, glowy, and beautiful without looking too heavy or overdone. Okay, now let's get into the eyes. I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit more so you can see where we're at. Hello, hello there. I guess I can show you my skin up close. So here we are. Ooh, 
So pretty, I just, I really love that highlight. All right, let's get started on the eyes. I'm gonna be showing you, again, this is like my everyday thing. So I've really been enjoying really monochromatic looks. I've been loving like peaches, which we're gonna be using an old fave today. I love this palette from Ofra. This is the Sweet Dreams and it's just, Perfect like these are my everyday type colors. It's kind of like my go-to palette if I just want something that I know is gonna look good I do want to shout out a few other palettes though that I think are good if that's not your color scheme This is the glitch 2000 palette and this has a lot of really beautiful like one shadow looks in it And I love that about it They're all kind of these satin baked formulas and I think that that's something that I think is more popular now Or I'm bringing back at least again. This is all my takes on it <laughs> But there are so many beautiful Beautiful, like cool tone looks you can do something more warm and then there are some pops of color even and I just I love a shimmer first off I love an all shimmer look I like a one shimmer look I like something monochromatic so I think that palette's really pretty and then a more recent one the good to go palette is really nice if you kind of want to have a little bit of everything there are some beautiful eyeshadows in here again I love those kind of terracotta tones but then you have that mint the highlighter has a little bit of everything again you get that swirling action going on and then I've actually really been enjoying this blush I might even amp up my blush if I feel like I need it with this one that's what I've been doing lately so those are just some options but they have a ton of these signature five pans with a bunch of different color stories anyway I feel like this formula is really user-friendly and that's something that I personally like when I'm doing something every day I want something that can almost blend itself so I'm gonna be taking the lightest matte shade in here beautiful peach and I'm gonna be putting that into the crease and I think this is gonna look so good with the blush that we've already put down and that you can see it's almost kind of already blending and watercoloring into. That's like my exact what I want. And I've been loving something really blown out. So, I mean, I'm over here just like being what seems sloppy, but it's really the look I'm going for. I feel like back in the day, mattes were like all anyone cared about. Like I feel like for a while with like different Urban Decay palettes or whatever, them only having like two mattes in there was like, give us mattes, we want mattes. And I feel like the pendulum has swung and I'm like, give me satins, give me shimmers. I also think like not necessarily following those pictorials. Do you remember those pictorials on the back of like different eyeshadow quads where you like really carve in the crease and really do the outer corner? I don't feel like that's as applicable now um, for a really great look. Like you can do that of course, but I think something a little bit blown out, a little less structured is definitely more popular even for like super big makeup lovers, not just someone who's trying to do something quick and easy. All right, so that's my first little layer down. I am gonna go on with the other matte and I'm gonna be using this on the outer corner, but I keep it still really light and I'm blending it into the blush. So you can really see how seamless that is. That's like my favorite look. And I think something that's so awesome about this type of style coming back, or at least what I'm doing <laughs> and loving right now, is that you don't have to worry about being so precise. You don't have to worry about like, having really steady lines and all that, which we will get into because I am going to be attempting <laughs> to modernize the wing. I always just kind of go back in with whatever brush I had. I could blend forever, always. Something else, I really have been enjoying taking color into the brow bone. This is not like a new thing for me, but if you haven't tried that, I definitely suggest it. All right, next I'm going to be taking this mauve mm, terracotta peachy shade onto the lid. I'm just using my finger and we already built down such a beautiful base that really this is so simple. I just take my finger, pat it down. And then as I have less on my finger, I kind of just blend upward and we don't really have to worry about like, where's the matte start? Where's the shimmer start? It's just kind of like free flowing, you know? I mean, this is the type of stuff I do all the time and people will be like, what'd you do? How'd you do that? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, I use my finger, <laughs> I didn't. It really wasn't like that much. I tend to do these types of like pretty simple looks. They're just my style. And what I feel honestly like the most pretty in. Okay, I love it so much. Now we're gonna take this center shade um, and I'm gonna be using that on the inner corner and the brow bone. You guys, I'm bringing the brow bone back. I used to highlight my brow bone all of the time. Do you guys remember when that's what everyone did? And then I feel like for a while it kind of, mm, I don't know, people weren't doing it, but I think 
I've found a way to kind of not feel like I'm going to prom, you know what I mean? Circa 2008 or something. <laughs> That's always just like what highlighted brow bones made me feel. But I do feel like I've found a way to bring it back. So I'm gonna be taking, this is just an angled shader or lid brush and I'm taking it into that blissful color. And I'm going to be taking that under the brow bone and then I'm blending out a ton. Because we kind of blended that shimmer pretty far up, there's no like shimmer matte shimmer. There's no like sandwich going on. And I find that blend and how it kind of like seamlessly transitions is something that makes it just modern enough that I think it's really beautiful instead of being outdated. And I just suggest going, you know, again, it's about finessing a little bit of product. We don't need to like do too much. Don't do too much. And then I'll usually always take whatever brush I use, the big blending brush. And I just kind of blend so there's nothing too stark. And I really just enjoyed the kind of light and again, the lift that highlighting under the brow bone has been giving me. All right, so I love where this look is at and I don't think I'm gonna add anything to the lower lash line. That's another thing. Do you remember the days when we used to just put eyeliner on your lower lash line? Like no eyeliner anywhere else? Yeah, <laughs> I used to do that. I used to do that. Kind of keeping the lash line open for me and my eye shape and all that really just helps keep my eye, yeah, open and bright. But also I feel like some Sometimes adding uh, a deep shade on the bottom can just kind of drag the eye down a little bit And so I've just been enjoying something a little bit more light and again, I'm using that word lifted You got me lifted, shifted, higher than the ceiling Ooh. You guys remember that song? So far this has been my like normal routine, right? <laughs> this next moment isn't. I am gonna be doing a wing liner. I know I just went off on this whole liner spiel. I'm talking about a uh, pencil liner and I was talking about the lower lash line. We're talking about the upper lash line now, totally different. This is a pen liquid liner. I definitely enjoy this type of liner format, like a liquid pen, so much control. And I remember when it felt like you couldn't do liner without doing a wing. I used to do winged liner all the time, every day for work I wore winged liner on my wedding day and since then I've stopped for the most part and that's mostly because I do have hooded eyes and I find sometimes liner can overtake my look if I'm not careful so I thought today for this video though I would try to incorporate the liner even though I don't have the most practice so don't judge me okay like I don't do it every day <laughs> but when I think of these girls on Instagram or like these trendy makeup looks I think there's a way that we can still do liner but it's definitely just not the way it was and that's by doing something a lot more more simple a lot smaller we're not doing like huge wings to the eyebrow right for me I'm gonna keep the wing a little bit shorter so that the hood of my eye isn't kind of like creasing it and kind of warping it I know there are tutorials on doing like a bat winged liner for hooded eyes but I don't want something so chunky and I don't want something so heavy so my goal <laughs> Fingers crossed I don't mess this up, guys. My goal is to do just like a nice little cute wing. Something just cutesy, you know? It doesn't have to be intense. We're not gonna go overboard. And I think that's the way we modernize it. I'm also not gonna bring it all the way into the inner corner because again, I don't have a ton of lid space and I feel like it's gonna keep the eye open and lifted. You get it, you guys get it. I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't nervous right now. I am nervous. I'm also not trying to like make it too like eh. I'm trying to keep it more straight. We got something. Okay, I'm not too proud to say that the wing needs a little work, okay? That, that's just me, that's all me, that's all me. I think I like the way that this one's looking. Definitely need a little bit more practice, but I hope you can really see how the inside, I didn't bring it very forward, and I definitely think that's one of the best ways to keep liner from looking too heavy on the eye, and definitely is like the more modern take on a wing. Let's add some mascara, and then we can get to the lips. I'm gonna be using the HD Volumizing Mascara by Ofra, you guessed it. I don't do anything that special when it comes to my lashes. I don't do like lashes at all. Like I don't add fakies, falsies. So what everyone calls them. I just like my natural lashes. Ooh, I'm kind of digging the wing. What do you guys think? Should I do the wing more often? I don't know. I think because it's still light, it adds a definition that I'm not used to seeing all the time. But since it's not on the bottom or anything, I think it still looks like light and lifted, like flirty. You have to let me know what you guys think of the wing. All right, I can't tell a lie. I went in, I couldn't. My perfectionism was getting to me and I kind of cleaned up my wing. Mm, I'm really liking it. I don't know why I don't do a wing more. I need to make that more of an everyday thing for me, seriously. All right, let's talk about lips because for me, the lip liner, I get not a new thing, not a new thing, not a new thing. But I used to like really not 
care about lip liner. I used to not care about it at all. I used to be like, who even used, like, no, give me a lip gloss, give me a lip balm, give me really just anything and everything else. Like, I just wasn't feeling lip liner, but I love lip liner. It's like changed how I feel about my lips and, and I've just gotten way better at lining my lips. I've also been doing a way more, I feel like, modernized lip shape. And so we're gonna talk about that. Today I'm gonna be using the shade in mauve from Ofra. I love that this is a pencil first off. I don't like twist up lip liners. I like it old school. I kick it old school. I want something that's not super creamy as in you touch it to your lips and so much pigment goes on. I just don't feel like I have the control. I really want to like kind of build that pencil up. I want that line to not have to be super sharp immediately. I want to kind of build to that sharpness and pencil lip liners do that. I also like, you know, kind of using the edges of pencil lip liners to help feather in the color. So love a pencil and Ofra has tons of amazing shades. So today I'm gonna use mauve, but Spicy's good. Chestnut's a really nice brown lip liner. There's one called Copper, which has a little bit of shimmer, but again, a really nice neutral. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just so into lip liners. So regardless of what you're gonna do, I think you should start with a lip liner, you guys. I have been, it's hard to talk while I lip line my lips. So I guess I'll get a shape going and then I'll talk to you. Okay, so on the bottom of my lip line, I draw on the line. I don't draw inside, I draw a little bit on the outside. It's not like overlining, I really don't feel like I look like I've really overlined my lip, but that extra little bit does definitely give me a plumper look, which, you know, is nice. And then I do fill in my lips because honestly, a lot of the time I will just use lip liner. I'll just use lip liner. I don't use any other lip products. I know glosses are popular right now. And of course you can use glosses. I think, you know, those are really easy. Um, but I, I love this because it's not uh, matte. Like it's not as much as like a liquid lipstick, but it is more long lasting. I feel like lip liners are meant and usually formulated to really stay on the lips, but they're still comfortable. It's just perfect. And I like right now a matte lip. I think it just gives such a nice plump blush look to the lips. And I do think that it's nice for masks because sometimes glosses get <laughs> stuck to your mask. So here's where we do the like more improved modernized lip shape. Don't follow your cupid's bow. If your cupid's bow is super pronounced, I want you to try to not pronounce it as much. So we all have that cupid's bow, but instead of really like lining it and showing that, I'm going to kind of in that valley of the mountain, I'm going to kind of do something a little softer and we're not gonna see the mountains as much because it's gonna be more of a rounded shape there. Now, depending on your lip shape, you're gonna wanna work with that, I think, because if you have super pronounced, like how much you round it might differ because I do think that you want it to look still natural and nice in real life, you know what I mean? But I definitely have felt so much more confident with this kind of new lip shape I've been doing. And you can see how I use the side of my lip pencil instead of like the point. Use the side, use that to your advantage. And you're gonna get something really nice. I just, I love a lip liner, you guys. Oh my gosh. I truly never thought the day would come when I'd like a lip liner, but I really do. Now, of course, on from here on out, you can add like gloss or a liquid lipstick on top, whatever you want, but I would just leave, this is every day for me, I would leave it here. Even if you're just using lip balm too, I suggest like put your lip balm on and then just kind of run a little bit on that outer edge with the lip liner, just to kind of show that there's an edge to your lips if you don't have really pronounced, defined lip lines between like your skin and the lip. You guys get what I'm talking about? <laughs> it really just adds something so tiny, but you can tell, you really can tell. All right guys, so that's the final look. This is like something I would do every day. Let me like just check it all out. It's something simple yet pretty. I'm glad I experimented with the wing and kind of modernized that for myself. I do like that as well, but I really hope some of the techniques I kind of talked about today can help you if you're, you're looking to maybe modernize or try something new with how you're applying products. I really, really suggest you trying out the blush, like see how you like it. I know it can seem a little bit scary, but start light, start really light, and then you can kind of build up as you get used to it. I think that's like my number one tip because to me, it just like has changed how I do my whole face. Also the highlighter, I, I love, mm, I love how I do my highlighters. <laughs> I love 
how I do my makeup. Oh. But yeah, if you guys have any tips uh, for how you feel like you've modernized maybe an older technique that you used to do, let us know in the comments. Share the love, share the knowledge. Thank you so, so much to Ofer for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate them. Uh, they're awesome. And of course, again, if you liked any of the products, you want to try them out. I will have everything obviously <laughs> linked down below for you to check out and shop. I think you'll really like the products. And yeah, other than that, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.